Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I want you to imagine that you're about to go on a tour of the Gettysburg battlefield. You arrive and plan to meet your guide, the one that you've hired to show you the sights and describe what happened on those three momentous days in July, 1863. Now, Imagine that not one guide, but three show up. Two of them are Union generals, and the other is a Confederate major who actually fought in the battle. Impossible today, but was not the case in 1904 when President Theodore Roosevelt arrived on the battlefield on Decoration Day to see the sights. And he was joined by three men who actually fought in the battle and a fourth who was there, but not necessarily engaged. There's a great newspaper article from 1904, right after Decoration Day, that has all the details. And I want to read you the passage, the relevant passage about Roosevelt's tour of the battlefield. Before I get into it, I want to tell you who the three guides are and the fourth person who was there. First one is Major General Oliver Otis Howard. He's 73 years old in 1904, and he's remembered for his 11th Corps, which was hit hard by the Confederates during the first day of the battle. The second person, the other Union general, is Daniel Edgar Sickles. He's now 84 years old. He notably advanced his third corps about a half a mile ahead of his prescribed position, exposing a gap that the Confederates were quick to exploit, inflicting heavy casualties. Sickles himself suffered a serious wound that required the amputation of his lower leg. The third individual, the Confederate, is Major William McKendry Robbins of the 4th Alabama Infantry. He's 75 years old. His regiment, part of Brigadier General Evander McIver Law's Brigade, John Bell Hood's division of James Longstreet's Corps, fought in the thick of the action at Little Round Top and suffered serious losses. That fourth person happens to be the governor of Pennsylvania, Samuel Whitaker Pennypacker. He's the youngster in the group, age 61. In 1863, he enlisted in the 26th Pennsylvania Emergency Infantry and served a six-week term. So now I want to take you to the relevant passage from the newspaper article, which gives you all the details and some interesting interactions between the generals and the major. So here we go. Quote, the train was stopped in Gettysburg at Reynolds Avenue, the road which traverses the position of the Confederate forces on the first day of the battle. There, the president and party entered carriages and started on a drive over the battlefield. As President and Mrs. Roosevelt alighted from their car, they were greeted by Governor Pennypacker on behalf of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and by a reception committee of the Corporal Skelly Post No. 9 Grand Army of the Republic, under whose auspices the ceremonies of the day were conducted. A section of a battery of the 3rd Artillery fired a salute of 21 guns. The drive over the battlefield occupied three hours and a quarter, the entire 20 miles of the fine roads built by the national government being covered. Frequent stops were made to enable the president to study at close range some of the more important features of the historic field. He manifested familiarity with the details of the battle and expressed the deepest interest in various incidents recounted by General Howard and General Sickles, both of whom participated in the three days engagement on Little Round Top, where a prolonged stop was made. Generals Howard and Sickles described the battle, 
the president, Mrs. Roosevelt, and the entire party, listening attentively to the graphic word pictures the distinguished veterans drew of the situations as they arose during the battle. At the president's request, General Sickles pointed out where he received the wounds that cost him his right leg. In that connection, he said that he did not know precisely when he received the wound, as he did not know that he had been hit until he returned to his headquarters about 6.30 p.m., only discovering the fact then by finding his right hand, which had been resting on his leg, covered with blood. While Generals Howard and Sickles were talking, Major Robbins, who served as a major in the 4th Alabama and Law's Brigade, during the second and third days of the fighting, joined the party and greeted the president. He was recognized instantly by General Sickles, who remarked eagerly, quote, there is the fellow who tried to take the hill but found it too high, end quote. Yes, responded Major Robbins, quote, we charged up this hill, but you mowed us down like grass. We could not stand it and had to get back, end quote. The Major, Robbins, then recounted some interesting details of the part of the contest in which he participated. After hearing crossfire of graphic descriptions of both the Union and Confederate participants, President Roosevelt remarked, quote, this country is all right so long as we can have this kind of talk on Little Round Top, end quote. Can you imagine what that would have been like to be standing by, to be right there next to Theodore Roosevelt, as he's listening to General Howard, General Sickles, and Major Robbins talk about the fighting. Now, don't you wish that the reporter would have jotted down the word pictures that were drawn up by these three men who were there, these three veterans? Just a wonderful scene to imagine and to recount. So there you have it, President Roosevelt's Decoration Day 1904 tour of the battlefield at Gettysburg with three guides that we all wish, I'm sure we all wish, we would have loved to have listened to. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.